Radio Diary 3. As I've been studying horsemanship through the 17th and 18th centuries, I am discovering more and more on just how they trained their horses to do things, which was the question I set out to get answered. I'm continuing to study the military aspect of it and how horses are ridden, but what I'm now interested in is the civilian part of life. How are horses used in farming and in agriculture? I've been receiving help from agricultural historian Ed Schultz. He is an interpreter at Colonial Williamsburg who specializes in 18th century agriculture. Here, Ed invited me to show me how he prepared soil for crops true to a colonial fashion. Two weeks of nitrogen is locked up in the decomposition of the grass. So that is not the case here. I'm finding masses amount of information on how horses are used to pull carts and carriages. I have several different pictures of horses pulling carts and carriages and plows and the different harnesses that they had. So this was truly a way of life back then that I want to know more and more about. What I found interesting about her harness is that she can do all of her usual movements while wearing it. For instance, she can do the circle game, she can yield, she can go sideways, back and forth. So I'm doing all of these exercises ultimately to get her used to it and confident wearing it. And since we do these exercises all the time anyway, she'll just grow familiar with it. Now here, what I'm going to do is an exercise using the britchet. Now the britchet acts as the brake system on a cart. This is because the cart will pull against her haunches, ultimately stopping the vehicle. So the exercise here is that I'm pulling on the britchet with straps tied to it. And she's supposed to either stand still or go backwards while I'm pulling against it. and I release as a reward. Hello. What you doing? Now here the exercise is for her to get used to me being behind her. I'm simulating what I'm gonna be doing when I'm in the cart by leading her from behind. And she doesn't quite get it. When I've taught this to horses before, their natural inclination is to always turn around and try to be with you, like when you're leading them. So this is a new exercise for her, and she keeps going to the left and to the right. She doesn't want to go forward. But I click her up, or cluck her up, and she learned this really quick. I say go to the left, and she goes to the left. She's a good girl. So she learned this pretty quick. And she's sniffing the tire, because next I'm going to attach her to the tire and she's going to have to pull it. That's going to be her next exercise right here. Now I'm helping her pull it this time because I was taught that to get a horse confident pulling a tire, first it helps if you help them out. And of course she does really well. I got the idea to pull a tire because it'll simulate a plow. I got the idea from Ed Schultz at Colonial Williamsburg. Here is Ed telling me all about the plows of the 18th and 17th century. Parts of the plow, the moldboard is this part here. 
It's a wood mold board. Metal sheathing on it so it doesn't wear, wear out so fast. Okay. The, this is called the Coulter right here. The Coulter opens up the furrow. Okay. It starts that line. And now this is really good to do it. The shovel plow is um, not documentable for about 1795. Okay. Here. There, we live in a world of opposites. Uh -huh. Left is right and right is left. When steering something, if you want to make it go left, you lean to the right. Okay. Horsemanship in the development of the early republic started at Virginia, notably at Jamestown, when the first shipment of horses arrived in 1609 on a ship called the Blessing. Now the Blessing carried a total of nine horses. Technically only eight horses made it to Jamestown because one of the poor mares died en route. After this, many more generations of horses came and they were all utilized for not just one, but several different jobs. they would carry the soldiers on land that was otherwise impenetrable on foot. But their main job was in agriculture. The settlers were starving and, according to Captain John Smith, not making food for themselves. So the fort's main sponsor, the Virginia Company of London, sent those first British horses. According to Ed Schultz, horses were really perfect for growing the staple grain that fed the British colonists, which was wheat. For the British, bread and beer were a part of their daily diet. A Spanish spy who came into the Jamestown colony commented on how the Brits were starving solely because they didn't have bread and beer, mostly beer, which made up like 80% of their caloric diet. But barley and wheat were the two crops horses were perfect for growing. According to Ed Schultz, horses weren't necessarily needed to grow staple grains like corn or tobacco. So I'm mainly focusing on how horses were used in growing wheat and barley. The horses were also incredibly helpful in clearing out the many forests and trees to make large tobacco plantations in the 17th century. That actually eventually led to the town of Williamsburg by 1699, which became the capital. But before then, it was a massive tobacco plantation which in all likeliness had been plowed sometimes by oxen and sometimes by horsepower. This made way for various tobacco plantations, which helped create a class of gentry and really a civilization around the entire state. I think that covers just about everything. What I'm going to be trying to do next is hitching her up to the cart. I'm going to be training her uh, continuously from here on out. Right now she still gets a little confused when I ask her to just go forward with me behind her, but that will translate for her into pulling me in a cart in the near future. Hi.